Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. Today we taste a royal whiskey, the Royal Lochanaga, 12 years old, and the word royal uh, was given to this whiskey by Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria uh, uh, went over to the distillery by horse to take her after tea dram at the distillery. The distillery is situated close to Balmoral Castle, the Scottish summer castle of the British Crown. So Queen Victoria rode over and had their sip and shortly after their first visit to the Loch Naga distillery, the Royal Varand was granted to the distillery. Um, on the box it said, by appointment to their late majesties, Queen Victoria, King Edward VII and King George V. So, not only did Queen Victoria enjoy her dram, but also King Edward and King George. Um, Royal Loch Naga established 1845, a close neighbor to the sovereign's Highland Castle Balmoral. The Loch Naga distillery was established in 1845. It was soon visited by an approving Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, a German from Coburg, and shortly after this became Royal Loch Naga. One of Scotland's smallest distilleries, Royal Loch Naga remains true even today to its simple origins as a farm. Yes, when I visited Royal Loch Naga in 1998, I think, 98, um, then the Queen just left Balmoral. I saw her and Fergie and a lot of other royals. And then I went over to the distillery and there are the visitor center in a one-story building, old stone and granite walls and they looked like stables. And indeed, the visitor center was formerly a stable. Whiskey is still made here in old stone buildings and even the former stables and corn lofts are put to good use. Spring water flows down to the distillery through the Balmoral estate. Oh. From the lower slopes of Loch Nagar, the forbidding summit to the south. The exquisite little copper pot stills, again among the smallest in Scotland, make a most refined malt fit for all occasions. <laughs> Small stills do not make a most refined malt. Uh, they build a stronger malt. So the, the, it's the height of the steroids, which uh, of the pot stills, which lead to a weak mellow, smooth alcohol. The small ones are not. They are good for a strong one. Subtle and freshly woody, this medium-bodied single malt from forested Royal Deeside is aged for 12 years in oak casks. On the nose, typical of the Highland style, there's fragrant linseed oil and sweet toffee offset by fresh acidity. Yes, the acidity. I talked to the uh, distillery manager then and he said well they uh, use a very long fermentation period in the wash bags they even ferment the wash for the wort to the wash for 96 hours this is one of the longest periods uh, in the industry and this perhaps or this definitely gives more aroma uh, more distinct aromas inside uh, the wash but it might also lead to some vinegar bacteria, probably, which raise the acidity of the wash and the final spirit. Um, pleasantly balanced, the palate dries to a medium length finish in which a sandalwood note linges attractively. It has only 40% ABV and it belongs to the uh, classic malt selection. Do not mix it up with the classic malts of Scotland. The six famous uh, malts, Lagavulin, Tarasca, Oban, Craigenmore, Delvini and Glenkinchy. But the classic malt selection is an even 
broader selection of I think 12 or 13 different single malls including those classic malls of Scotland and uh, so the proprietor of the distillery Diageo the biggest uh, distilling company in the world uh, lifted this single malt uh, into the classic malts selection. In the beginning definitely sherry, a strong fruitiness based on caramel, smooth alcohol even at the 40% ABV, maltiness, and a little sweety fruitiness. Quite strong. Hmm. A lot stronger on the tongue than on the nose and oak is appearing a little bitterness perhaps this sandal wood becoming drier and this slight acidity they talked about on the box is there yes and there is a the tension between this fruity acidity and the light bitterness of the casks. The aftertaste is quite long still there, so the oak is there. Fruitiness and sweetness, and on the tongue it's sweet. Uh, it's, it's becoming drier. And it's sad, it should be slightly smoky, but I think the aromas from the casks are so close to these aromatic uh, phenols from uh, a peat fire. So, those are the casks, not the peat smoke. Uh, well done, single malt whiskey. And it's not that expensive even for its 12 years. So, if you are able to get your fingers on those bottles, get one, it's worth it. And thank you for watching whiskey.com. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Give me your thumbs up and feel free to share this video with your friends. Thank you.